Hey guys, welcome to this first lesson of the Rhino verification course. And in this introduction lesson, I'm going to explain to you briefly uh, what Rhino is and briefly go over the interface. So why Rhino? What is Rhino and where does it stand out? Well, Rhino is an open freeform 3D modeling software developed by Robert McNew and Associates. And it's a very versatile and powerful 3D modeling software. And it's one of my favorite tools for designing. Rhino is used to design and engineer products ranging from uh, jewelry, furniture, architecture, marine design, and also automotive design. In other words, it's, like a, it's more or less like a Swiss army knife. In architecture, it's mainly used in the schematic design phases to quickly and accurately design options, all the way to assist in the process of creating construction documents. Most examples and workflows I'm going to go through will be focused on architecture, but they can also be applied to other in industries as well. After this course, you will know the basics of Rhino and you will feel confident to start modeling your first project. So when you first open Rhino, you'll be greeted with a welcome screen. This welcome screen, there's three tabs that are important. The first one is to choose a template. And you can choose templates ranging from small objects to very large objects, depending on if you're going to have a project that's uh, in millimeters, in centimeters, or even in meters. Because we're going to be mainly focused on architecture, we're going to choose the large objects meters template. And also we're going to work in the metric system, not the imperial one. But if you feel like it, you could also choose the imperial template. And then we have the next tab, which is the recent tab. And here you'll find the most recent models uh, you've been working on. For me, right now it's empty. But if it's correct for you, it will be full with your most recent project. So it's like a shortcut to quickly open a model uh, you've been working on. The third tab is to open a model you'd like to work on if it's not specified in the recent tab. And then on the right, you'll find some shortcuts to news related to Rhino and 3D modeling. And also some tips and tricks to quickly start modeling within Rhino. I'm using the new Rhino 6 because it has some nice uh, new commands and features that I'm going to show you later on. But you could also use Rhino 5. It's very much similar in the way it looks and the way it works. So let's get to it. So let's go to our new tab and open the meters I was talking about, the large objects meters. In this lesson, I'm mainly going to go over the interface. So as you'll see when we start using Rhino, Rhino is a command-based program, which means that every action you perform will be through a certain command. And those commands all have a name. Now there are three ways to access those commands and I'm going to go over all three of them later on, but it's important to remember this. So the first thing you'll see all the way on the top is the menu bar and here you'll find the first way of accessing those commands. In file, you'll find uh, options like opening a new file, saving it, importing other files, like what you're usually used to with other programs, uh, it's the same for Rhino, that in file you find those same options here, or commands here. Under edit, you'll find the most uh, helpful commands like undoing things, redoing things, copying, pasting, and other Rhino-specific commands like trimming or exploding geometry, which we'll take a look into uh, further on in the, in the course. The view tab has to do with the geometry being displayed in the Rhino canvas, which I'll go over in a, in a little while. And all the view related things uh, are under this tab. And then under curve, surface, solid mesh, those are related to the different types of geometry of Rhino and mainly how to create them, edit them, uh, transform them, etc. Dimensions, those are all the, it's for annotation purposes. If you wanna add a dimension to your project, measuring things, uh, measuring an angle, those things. Transform is to transform a certain geometry, like moving, rotating, scaling, and all these things. Tools, those are some extra options related to Rhino. If you want to load an uh, external plugin, go to the Rhino options, which is all the way in the bottom, which is an important feature of Rhino, because under the options you'll find uh, very specific things from Rhino, which, which you can change, which we'll take a look at also later. And then further on, we have analysis to do an analysis on certain types of geometry. And then the last step is the render tab. And here you can find things for visualizing your model. The panels, those are some extra toolbars 
you can access in Rhino, which I'm going to get to in a second. And the help, here you can find everything that has to do with help topics. And Rhino has a very nice feature that every command you use, it will automatically display a help bar on the side. You directly know if you're not sure what this command does, it will guide you through it, which I'm also going to show you in a second. So the next thing is the command history, which is this small part here in the top. Right now it's really small, but you can extend it by dragging this thing down, for instance, like here you see now that I only have a couple of lines of history here, but as soon as you start working on your project, you're going to see that this history bar fills up, let's say. And then the next line is the command line, and that's the second method, how to initiate a command. And that's also one of my favorite methods to initiate a command, because it's really fast. You just type in the command and it will execute. Only when I'm not quite sure what the name of the command is or where it's located, I'll, I'll use either the menu bar or the toolbars. The toolbars are located below the command bar, and that's the third and last way how to initiate a command. It's more official way, if you compare it with the menu bar, it's more official way of how to initiate a command. And here you can see, like I showed you in the file from the menu bar, that here you have the same things. You can also open a new file, uh, save it, etc. And the nice thing of the toolbars is that it's a visual representation, so it's more easy and fast to apprehend what a command does. And every button has, well, most of them, they have, um, a different command hidden under it. So you, if you left click on a command, you have one action, one command being executed. And if you right click, you get the other one, let's say. I mean, here it's visually displayed. If you hover over zoom selected, the left click will zoom selected a certain type of geometry. And then if you right click, it will select all viewports. So it's a different command uh, under one button, which is really handy. The standard toolbar is right located here, which all, with all the standard commands, those are the commands you'll be using the most. But you can click on different tabs to change the, the toolbar. And you see that the, the toolbar will update accordingly. It's more or less ordered like the, the menu bar. You have options to edit geometry, transform geometry, options for visualization, annotation, etc. And if you want to, you can reorganize these toolbars. Right now, I have unlocked them. And if you drag over a certain part, you see the mouse turn into the four arrows. And that means you can drag certain toolbars wherever you want them. And if you drag them back, supposedly like this, it will pop back in, into its place. The same goes for any tab. If you click and drag with your left mouse, you can drag a certain tab out and put it anywhere. I think I can even put it, yeah, with the other one, with the standard one, or if I want to, I can just put it back and release my left mouse and it will turn back. You can increase the size, decrease the size, uh, etc. Make this bigger and, and uh, etc. If you don't want this, if you say, look, well, I don't want to accidentally move tabs. If you right click on a gray area on your toolbar, you can do locked docked windows and it will prevent you from moving or accidentally dragging out certain stuff. I had it in the beginning that I accidentally closed a tab or I moved the, the standard tool when I couldn't find it back. There's one thing to, to do if you right click on a gray area and do show toolbar, here are all the toolbars available in Rhino. And if you can't find it here, if you're like, hey, I, I did something, I didn't know how to restore it. Uh, there's a nice command that really helped me, uh, and it's called toolbar reset. If you hit this command, Rhino will default to its default state, and you have a clean slate to start again, which for me was really helpful. Okay, so the next point in the interface from Rhino is its canvas, the Rhino canvas, and that's where all your geometry and your project will be displayed. And the way Rhino manages that is through viewports. And a viewport is basically a window which you're looking through, like a camera. And that camera has certain properties and it will look uh, at your project. The default is set to a perspective view, a top, a front, and a right view. And you can select 
a viewport by simply clicking in the window and you'll see that the viewport gets highlighted. And if you want to maximize the viewport, simply double click on the name and it will display it big. And double click again to it to go back to four views. I will not go too far into this right now. I'll leave that for the next lessons. And then on the right, we have something called panels. And the panels are shortcuts towards different functions uh, within Rhino. The three panels I advise you to use, because we're going to use them mainly, is the Layers tab, the Properties tab, and the Help tab. If you can't see those three, or you have different ones activated, simply go to the, the cogwheel here, the Options, and you can select them here. So then we go almost all the way to the bottom, and that's called the OSNAP Toolbar. And that's a, a toolbar that allows us to accurately and quickly model certain elements from geometry, allowing us to snap to the grid or snap to other geometries and quickly model very fast and accurately. And then all the way in the bottom is the status bar, and here you'll find some handy information about your model, like which units you're currently working in, the layer you're working in, and some shortcuts like the snap option, planar option, uh, etc. Okay, so let's start with a command. So like I've been explaining since the beginning, if you want to do anything in Rhino, you have to start with a command. So let's do that. And let's draw a polyline in the three different ways I've been explaining. So first we'll do it through the menu bar. A polyline is basically a set of lines together. And it's located in a curve, polyline, and then polyline. And you click it, and then you'll see that in your Rhino canvas, on the viewports, you'll see that you're able to draw and start drawing your polyline because the cursor also changed into something else, which I'm going to explain in the, in the next lesson. And simply use your left mouse to start drawing your polyline. And when you're done, simply hit your Enter key to finish the command. So that's the first way to do it. The second way is to use the Rhino toolbar. So let's do that. So that's basically this button here, the polyline. So left click on it and you can do the same thing. Hit enter to terminate your command. And the last way is to type polyline in the command prompt. So I'm going to do that. And the nice thing is as soon as you start typing, you'll see that it has an autocomplete. It's really helpful because let's say I don't want to go for polyline, but I want to go to another one. I can simply, with my arrow keys, I can choose another option. But we want to use polyline, so let's hit enter. And then we can start drawing. One thing I haven't told you guys yet is that every time you execute a command, you have to take a look at the command prompt anyway, because it usually has some options. Like here, here you see start of polyline and persistent close. And if you hover over this, it gives you extra options that are included in this command. Persistent close basically means that we're going to close the polyline forcefully. And now I set it to yes, the default set to no. And now if I draw the polyline, you see that it will automatically close it for me. So if I now hit enter, I can close the command. But as you see here, the options change. As soon as I start drawing the points, I got more options here. As you can see, let's say you drew a point that you didn't want to. If you hit undo, you see that it will undo those points. So it's basically a set of options within the command. They're pretty helpful. And if you want to repeat the last command, which is something you're going to probably be doing a lot, uh, simply hit your enter key to start again with uh, your polyline. In doing an action in Rhino, it works the same as any other Windows software. It's simply hitting your Control Z key, and that will undo the last action, which is also uh, very helpful, obviously. So let's say you're drawing something, but you're, you didn't want to draw this. If you want to cancel a command, simply hit your Escape key, and it will cancel it. So this is the interface of Rhino. In the next lesson, we're going to go over selecting and navigating using your mouse and navigating through your scene.
I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into the viewports, uh, their different settings, etc. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.